what is up everybody and welcome to a brand new video and today we are in a somewhat russian factory called moskvich now it's not really a russian company just the name because the cars are basically chinese vehicles that are being produced but the history of this factory is actually quite big back in the day they used to make moskvich cars here and then I think in 1998, Renault bought out Moskvich and they began building Renault vehicles in this factory right here. In 2022, Renault has sold off its factory and what it had inside to the government of Moscow. So basically to the mayor of Moscow, sounds a bit sketch, sounds a bit communistic, but it is what it is. So after they sold it off, they started building a new Russian car, but it's not really Russian, it's a Chinese car. Anyways, let's get into the history of Moskvich and then we'll go and check out a dealership to see how they actually look like inside, see how it feels like. Does it smell like Chinese cars or not? So let's go and check out the history. History about the Moskvich factory. The Soviet Union entered a series of five-year plans in 1928 under the rule of Joseph Stalin. The goals of the plan was to rapidly industrialize the economy of the Soviet Union. Included in these plans were provisions for the development of domestic automobile production, as well as improving the quality of life for citizens affected. It was assumed that people who had learned to drive in peacetime would in the event of an armed conflict constitute a cadre of trained drivers for the Red Army. Industrial cooperation between Russia and the American Ford Motor Company dated back to the era of Nicholas II, with the company being an important supplier of passenger and commercial vehicles such as tractors and trucks. This cooperation continued despite the events and ideology of the Russian Revolution with tens of thousands of vehicles imported during the 1910s and 1920s. This was a necessity given the devastation of the state and its economic output in the wake of the Great War occupation of Russian territories by the Central Powers and the Russian Civil War. The construction of Moscow Core Assembly Factory began in 1929. In December 1930, the plant received the name of Kim, factory named after Communist Youth International. In the 1930s, the licensed production of Ford Model A and Ford Model AA vehicles began. These were assembled using knockdown kits. In 1933, the plant became a branch of Gaz and began to assemble Gaz A and Gaz AA vehicles. The following year, it started to produce their first own model. The Kim 10, inspired by, by the Ford Prefect, the plant's newly formed design department was headed by A.N. Ostrovtsev, an engineer from the NAMI and tasked by the economic committee of Sovnarkom with designing a small economy car suitable for large-scale manufacture. From November 1940s to April 1941, 338 sedans were assembled. Exact production numbers for the Phaeton version are unknown. First generation. In August 1945, the plant was renamed to the Moscow plant of small cars. Following the war, the Soviet Union requested vehicle tooling and designs from Germany as a part of reparations to compensate for the loss of industrial equipment in the Battle of Moscow. Soviet planners wished for a car similar in specifications to the Kim-10 and such rejected the KDF wagon and DKWF-8. The Opel Cadet K38 was found to match these requirements. In August 1945, the State Defense Committee published order number 9905 which prescribed the start of production of the cadet under the Moskvich 400 name. The implementation of this order was however deeply complicated. The Opelwerk Brandenburg plant had been deeply involved in the Nazi German war effort, producing aircraft engines for the Luftwaffe and had been heavily damaged by Allied bombing. However, a number of cadets has been captured by the Red Army and were available to study and was accomplished through joint Soviet-German ventures overseen by the Soviet military administration in Germany. 
Nonetheless, the majority of stamping dyes and tooling was freshly produced in the Soviet Union due to the amount of damage the factory. Production of Moskvich 400 and 420 began in December 1946 and continued for 10 years until 1956 with improved Moskvich 401. Some were exported to countries such as Belgium, East Germany and Norway. The factory, which has been renamed to Moskvich in the early 1990s, filed for bankruptcy in 2002 and ceased production. Unfinished body shells remained on the production line in various stages of completion, while furniture, computers, office supplies and documents remained in the plant's administration buildings. Several attempts to restart production had been made over the next three years, but none were successful. A portion of the abandoned plant was acquired by Avtoframas, later renamed as Renault Russia, a joint venture between the city of Moscow and French automaker Renault. In 2005, Avtoframas commenced assembly of Renault Logan sedans from imported knockdown kits. It later became wholly owned subsidiary by Renault. The bankruptcy of Moskvich was officially announced in 2006 and the company was liquidated the following year. As 2016, over a million Moskvich cars remained on Russian roads. In 2015, Renault announced they had begun the process for obtaining the Moskvich rights in Russia. In May 2020, 22, as a result of Western sanctions against Russia, Reno sold its Moscow plant to the Moscow city government which intended to nationalize the facility for renewed production of vehicles under the Moskvich name. Moskvich presented its new range of models on July 6, 2022. On October 20th, the mayor of Moscow, Sergei Sabanin, said that the production of Moskvich vehicles will resume in December at Renault's former factory in Moscow now renamed the Moscow Automobile Factory Moskvich, which has been inactive after Reno decided to leave the Russian market. There is a little bit of story about the Moskvich cars. What we can also see in this factory is actually a wall in front of it which basically shows you a little history of the Moskvich car because it was one heck of a big company unfortunately it fell apart but you still got some history going on from all the way from the start and all the way if you kind of look through you could see a bunch of Moskvich cars this was, I think, the last Moskvich car that was made, the Sviatogor, and then they started building this. The Moskvich 3E and the Moskvich 6, which is not a Russian car. Anyways, let's go and check out the Russian dealership of the, I swear, not a Chinese car, but a Russian car. Obviously, a lot of people do say that it is a Chinese car rebranded, and you got to take into consideration that they did give the jobs back to the people who worked in the Renault factory before because they kind of got laid off. So there is a plus side. Some families are still being fed from this factory from basically getting a bunch of parts from China. And this factory behind me actually builds the cores the way that they basically get the engine the suspensions and uh, they get a whole shell with the interior already done up and put into and shipped off to Moscow to the Moskvich plant where they basically put an engine inside it screw some wheels on and sell the car to the dealerships also if we look around a little bit in this factory right here we can actually see some Moskvich cars which are basically the jack cars slapped on with a Moskvich logo but we can actually see those cars being here and uh, you can see there's a sign that it needs like a, a bumper paint or something like that so this is the Moskvich 6 and the Moskvich I don't know 3 whatever the heck that Moskvich is I don't even I don't want to even know how to uh, identify them. This is basically the plant. Now let's go 
to the dealership and check it out. Obviously, you're gonna see a lot of Renault cars in this parking lot because this used to be a Renault factory from 98, I think, when well, you saw the history part, to 2022. So you could see there's a lot and a lot of Renault cars still in the parking lot. I think this is like a Renault Arcana or whatever. Anyways, this is the Renaults that they basically built in this factory. I don't know what they're doing here, but yeah, there's actually tons of them. There's another Renault here, another Renault over there. Renault, 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 Renault everywhere. Because this sign used to say Renault. Anyways, let's go into a dealership and see how much they cost. Compare them to the cost of the original Chinese car in China and see, are the Russian citizens being completely ripped off by the price? And can Russian citizens actually afford to buy themselves a Moskvich? That is a very big question, because as you know, the wages in Russia are not the best. So, is it possible to buy a Moskvich if you are working an ordinary job? Let's go and check it out. Well, I've arrived over to a Moskvich dealership, but it's very hard to find it. I remember one day I came here and I couldn't find it. So the hardest part in this situation is to actually find a flip in Moskvich. So let's go and ask where the heck can we get a Moskvich? Because there's a lot of Chinese cars. So I'm guessing it's gonna be somewhere in this section right here. So I've been told that the Moskvich is on the third floor of this dealership. So let's go and check it out and see. How the heck does it look like? Ooh, the elevator took too long, so I decided to just walk on the stairs. And I think I might have found the Moskvich. I don't know where it is. Seems like the Moskvich is this way, so let's go check it out. But I see Hyundai is here. Where the heck is the Moskvich? What floor am I in? I have no idea. Oh, look at this, guys. I see a Moskvich balloon here, which only means one thing. I think I've actually found the Moskvich, finally. And some other Chinese cars. I think this is a Chan Gang or something like this. Anyways, we have finally found the Moskvich cars, which took me absolutely ages to do. So let's check out the selection of cars here. We got the Moskvich 3, which is, I mean, you all guys know this is a Jack, an electric Moskvich, a Moskvich 6. I just want to check out the selection first. Hopefully those speakers are not going to demonetize my videos, but going to be quick then, I guess. And a Moskvich 6 business. Anyways, let's start from the first one over here real quick before anybody starts telling me anything looks like somebody is purchasing a Moskvich for themselves so we got a Moskvich right here this exact Moskvich is 2,285,000 rubles and uh let's just check it out I guess I've never actually sat in a Moskvich myself so this is interesting does it smell like China we're gonna see so I'm inside the Moskvich finally. Let's close the door over here real quick and actually look at what we got. So we got a steering wheel, which is a very good start. Automatic transmission. I'm pretty sure this is a variator right here. And this is all sensor, it seems like. Well, I mean, for 2 million rubles, I guess that's what you're supposed to get, which is like 23 thousand dollars or something like that so yeah i mean this is the moskvich i don't even know what to comment i'm sitting let me pull my chair back fully i mean you know the ergonomics of this car it's just not right it doesn't feel right can i move the steering wheel or something i don't know let's see yeah we can we can move the steering wheel up and down we can't pull it towards us so yeah i mean i don't really feel comfortable in this car i gotta say that it has weird um 
mirrors right here because you really have to kind of look left and right. So yeah, that's about the Moskvich 3. There's not much I could talk about. It's just they took off a badge right here and put another badge here. And uh, in the back, there's not a lot of space, I'm guessing, sitting behind me. Also, you could see there's a sunroof, which I mean, all right, sunroof. And uh, you got some weird sauce button right here that I don't know if I should press or not. And yeah, you got a mirror. We could look at each other right here in this mirror. Very nice. Other than that, I don't know. It doesn't feel like this car should cost this much. I wonder how much this car actually costs in China because that's really gonna make that difference because I'm guessing that in China, this car probably costs way less. And actually, I know the price already. It costs like $10,000 in China for this exact car. Could you imagine the price difference of $10,000 for the exact same car? If this car was $10,000, then yes. But considering it's like 22,000 or something like that, that is just way too expensive for it. Anyways, let's go and check out the electric version of this car and see how much it costs and can it compete with a Tesla. Guys, don't laugh. Don't laugh. <laughs> it's <lit. laughs> get out now. But before we do that, let's see how much space we got in the back. And yeah, there's not that much space. I don't think I'll be able to actually sit behind myself. Let me see. Well, I mean, I can get cramped inside somewhat. And uh, my knees are pushing into the driver but yeah this is a very very small car and they actually produce a lot of those cars well assemble basically they don't produce they assemble the cars and send them off to like car sharing services the police taxi services so this car is all over the roads right now you could see a lot of police driving them a lot of taxis and a lot of car sharings as well anyways i want to check out the electric one what is Elon Musk gonna tell us about this one? So let's check it out. So right here you see it's a Moskvich 3E, which means three electrical. How much does it cost? So it costs 3,950,000 rubles. It has 193 horsepower and 410 kilometer range. Oh, let's check this car out. I mean, the only difference from the outside, I'm guessing, is probably the recharge part right here, which you could open up and uh, charge your car. It looks like it has two different ports, I think. Let's let's just play around with this car. It looks like it has two different ports right here that you could differently charge. I'm not an electric car guy, so I have no idea. And, uh, you know, the build quality, I don't know. Is it supposed to be wobbling like this? I don't really know. This is this is not supposed to be like this, is it? I'm, I'm not a professional mechanic, but all right. It's a showroom car, I guess. How much we could do about it. But let's check out the interior. What do we got inside? You could already see that the seats look way different in this car. And it has electric seats in this. So this is, uh, you know, a level up for sure. Let me move that back up straight away because I know that it's very hard for me to fit inside of it. We obviously got the Moskvich logo on the floor mats over here. Let's sit down and see what we got. So I'll tell you one thing. Let me close the door so we can suppress the music a little bit. I could tell you one thing, guys. First of all, the seats do fill a bit more comfier but they're pretty much the same it just has some sort of a fake leather on it and the quality of it it's like it's not leather it's i don't even know what this is but if i zoom in you could see how how easily it is like you know this is all gonna be like crumpled up it's just so soft so the biggest difference we got here is we actually got an LCD screen, and from what you could see, this LCD screen looks like something out of 
2008 because I mean this reflection right here it's not supposed to be like that because it's an electric car you obviously got the reverse the neutral and the drive and the park all in this shifter knob that you could push around right here rather than that it is pretty much all the same the biggest difference now that this got a panoramic roof so yeah you got a panoramic roof in the Moskvich any other difference I don't know there's two buttons that you could still wire up yourself so you could do a do-it-yourself tutorial on that and you could see the elegant golden design part over here to make it look stylish and very nice you know but yeah this is uh soft right here i don't know why would you make this soft but i guess you'd be touching this this is the only soft part of the top part of the torpedo so yeah i don't know for that much money you'll see the price right here this is unbelievably expensive like i'm pretty sure you could buy a tesla for that much money it would be comfier faster better and it's not a jack which is a moskvich and okay anyways let's check out the sedan which is the newest release of the moskvich anyways gotta get out of this fancy looking door right here and check out the moskvich 6 you know what it's actually very interesting let's check out the trunk before we go to the Moskvich 6. So this is how the rear end of the car looks like and in Russia as you can see it's very dirty so you are gonna have so much muck here to open this up. Is this electronic? No it's not. So there's not that much room I mean there'll be enough to kind of hide your stuff this way. And I wonder what you got in the back here let's see let's see always interesting what do you got here wow you got a lot of space and a wheel okay oh i could smell china from here yes oh that is that is china right there i think i just dug my way into china what if i press this is gonna close nope you gotta you gotta try to close it and every time you try to close it it opens up so you gotta like get it down and i think this is very hard. Finally, it closed down. Anyways, let's check out the Moskvichs. And I don't want to go to the expensive Moskvich. I want to actually check out the cheaper Moskvich first. So, which one is the cheaper one? Yes, guys, this is the cheaper version for 2826 It's got a variator transmission, 136 horsepower. All right, 136 horsepower. So let's have a view of the outside of the car. You know what? I was thinking of making like a proper montage of this car, but let's just walk around real quick. You could see it has small wheels. This is like a Kia Optima, basically. I think it's in the exact same category as a Kia Optima right here. So let's go inside and check out how it feels like. Now, you know what? I'll tell you one thing. This feels already nicer than the Moskvich 3. I'll be honest with you. So let's get inside and have a feel for ourselves. Oh, wow. This is actually very small. Let me close the door right here. So we're inside the Moskvich 6 right now, which has a little sunroof, as you could see. So let's look at the interior here so we got a steering wheel right here and a very very tiny screen what the heck is wrong with this steering wheel it's wobbling look at it wobbling around the place anyways it's a very very tiny screen right here you can see it's been driven 14 kilometers probably like off the ramp into the showroom and stuff like that but this is just funny to see this type of screen and a new car in 2024 obviously you think that you might be having a huge screen right here but you don't i wish i could turn it on probably can't oh, oh look at this i probably can't turn it on but the screen is like this you could kind of see 
the outline probably has some android system in it obviously yeah i mean i don't know i think this car would probably be good for a taxi or if uh you're you know what i'll be honest with you it'll be a decent car and i wouldn't be trolling around that much if it was priced like in china where it's literally half price of what it is being sold in russia that way it'll be fine because it'll be the car of the people that everybody could afford and buy and if this car would be an affordable one then i wouldn't be hating on it so much because everybody would be able to buy it drive around you know have their family inside of it but if you're having a car like this which is so expensive and like you could buy a used um i don't know like a, a decent used european or american car for this price instead some people are getting a chinese car i'm pretty sure you could get a like a, a toyota or a hyundai which is a bit more legit than moscow if you think about it anyways there's not much i could really say about this car rather than i actually feel a bit cramped inside but you guys know me i like big cars so i am going to feel cramped inside you could also see that the steering wheel doesn't actually have some buttons and that is because you don't have the best options and let's go check out better option car i wonder if this scratches no that's good anyways i want to check out the rear real quick and see how much space we got in the back so yeah i mean let me try to get in i wonder i was sitting quite comfortable in front wow this is let me close the door let me close the door i am actually this is let's get the cup holders out right here good enough it actually has a charger here a is it a usb yeah a usb just two usbs normal usb so you could be charging up your phone i like that rather than that i literally have no room to move around and i am sitting extremely uncomfortable inside and i wonder how it's made this way considering that this car is actually quite large i have no idea how could this be done why wouldn't you just uh built a jack factory which is the original car and build the cars there and give the jobs to those people and just create your own car the company uh ceo the director is saying that and the mayor of moscow are saying that they're going to be building a fully russian car but in reality we never really made a fully russian car even if you look at the history of moscow it was basically opal based cars so i don't know what is going to change we don't really have any truly russian cars that are built here and yeah anyways let's check out the trunk and go to the better option of the car and get the heck out of here because it smells too chinese being in this car oh guys i got nothing against chinese people all right i'm just you you smell the chinese inside the cars how do we open this bad boy up Oh, look at that spacious trunk. Now, this trunk is huge. I got to tell you that for a fact. I wish they utilized a bit more space for the back passengers, to be honest with you. Let's close this down. At least this closes another Moskvich. Not really bothered checking it out, but let's check out this black on black Moskvich for the real OG gangsters right here. And you could see already that this Moskvich is cooler because it has an AliExpress logo projector in here let's see what we got so this is the more expensive this is the more expensive moskvich and what do we got here we got cup holders did we have them in that version i don't know um you got your gearbox you know a manual if you're racing around the place you got neutral drive um well you got your sauce button here so you could be what the I can take this back home. I can assemble myself a Moskvich myself. Anyways, this car is pretty much the exact same thing. And 
Yeah, I mean, what the heck is what the heck is that? What is that? What? I actually. Oh, it's if you. Oh my God! Look at this, guys. So if you have your AC running, you could open this up, and it's gonna cool this compartment. You know what? It looks hilarious, but it is quite cool. You know, you can cool it down but i mean it's always going to be warming up your compartment even if it's closed because the air is still going to come out somewhat and if you have like a chocolate here or something like that it's going to melt you got your led lights here that's pretty much it put your racing glasses and this bad boy right here and the car we were in was three million one hundred and sixteen thousand rubles could you imagine that so guys, I'm sitting down with this nice gentleman over here and I was wondering how much do you need to make so that you could take a loan out for this electric Moskvich and buy it for yourself. So right now, we're actually going to be able to figure that out. If you do the initial Понятно. Спасибо вам большое за такую информацию. Yeah. Хорошего вам дня. Спасибо right. большое. Yeah. До свидания. So you guys heard it for yourself. Obviously, once we get back home, we're gonna do a bit of math calculations. But imagine this: you need to put in eight thousand dollars first, and then you pay like five hundred dollars every single month for five years. Five flipping years. That's crazy. What's going on in the Changang dealership? So many people here. What's going on? Anyways, <laughs> looking at the Chan Gang dealership is for another day. Right now, I need to get back home and I want to discuss this with you because we need to do a bit more research. But thanks to that nice gentleman over there working for the Moskvich, we actually know how much of a loan you need to take to buy yourself an electric Moskvich. Flip an egg. I'll see you home. Well, we're finally back home now and I've done a bit of research on the Moskvich. First of all, there are tons of Yandex reviews. It's like Google reviews, but Russian browser reviews that says like, oh, I bought myself a Moskvich and in three weeks it broke down and you can't get it fixed. I'm guessing that most of the ports have to be outsourced out of China, brought to the factory, then dispersed to the dealerships. It's a big big pain to keep them running also there are rumors that nobody really buys them except taxi services the police which is basically the government and nobody else really buys them because you guessed it right it is absolutely insanely expensive to purchase yourself a moskvich i mean look at it right you gotta put a down payment for eight thousand dollars and for five years, you pay like $600 every single month to own a Moskvich, an electric Moskvich, which isn't even that powerful, not built very well, you could see from the video. And yeah, also considering that most of the Moskvich are at around that price point, it is very hard considering that the realistic average salary in Moscow, I'm not going to be even talking about Russia right here, in Moscow is around like $750 a month. So would you think that a person with a salary of $750 a month would be able to, first of all, save up $8,000 for a down payment and then keep on paying like $500 a month or something like that, or $600? That is insane prices. And that is the biggest reason why the Moskvich is not that popular in Russia because nobody can really afford it. Now, hopefully you enjoyed this format of the video. And if you did, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel and comment on what you would also like to see while we are still in Russia reporting from the ground. Thank you very much. And I'll see you next time.